Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching me play Divinity Original Sin 2. Um, some kind of management stuff I did in between episodes. Um, I no longer need the teleporting gloves on Losa. Um, the reason is, is because I actually taught her teleport. Um, we don't have it actually memorized yet, but eh. I also got her Dazzling Bolt as well. So I, I taught her Teleportation, Dazzling Bolt, and Armor of Frost. Um, so I taught her those three spells, and for the Red Prince, I taught him uh, Winter Blast, which I have swapped out for Hail Strike, just because it's cheaper. Does a little less damage, but it's a very big area, and it does it does on the whole more damage, I would say, and it costs less. So they're the only notable changes we did since last episode. Also, you'll notice I spent all my money to do so. Um, I actually had to steal one of those spell books. I stole it from. Um, the water dude, Armor of Frost, I stole using Los, and then I just used it. Um, I'm not sure if I've shown that off before, but I can. We're going to go down here and take on the Flenser, which is a pretty difficult fight. So, we may not go too well, but we'll see. Oh, the dogs. Hmm, the dogs no longer like us, which is a shame. If I can avoid attacking him, I will. The Flenser's Playground. Uh, before we go down there, I want to come up here just to make sure that I got all this stuff. I don't think I did. I didn't. I never explored this. Bishop Alexander is looking rather regal. Hmm. Artistic license and all. <laughs> What is this? Some sort of magister weapon. So we got a drained wand, which is just a fire wand that does not much, according to this. Carved from an ancient metal-like material, the wand is heavier than it appears. Etched along this shaft is a symbol of the Source King, Bracus Rex. And to Niles notes. This meticulously cared for notebook is filled with line after line of small, neat handwriting. One page is marked with a lock of raven hair bound by a blue ribbon. What a lovely little trick Dallas uncovered. It makes them so compliant, so willing. My playground has never been more flush with pleasures. She'll be glad for the advancements I've made. No one likes to play with a zombie after all. A modicum of will must remain, or where's the fun? So this guy's clearly a nut job. Um, Lucy can now unlock this. If she had any lockpicks, which we do not have by the look of it. I used my last lockpick. Alrighty then. So, to create lockpicks, I don't think it... Ah, here, claw hammer. That's why I kept it. I did not want to equip it. Um, if we combine the claw hammer with some nails, get four lockpicks. Um, so I'll get like eight. That would probably do us. Okay, eight lockpicks. Now she can pick the lock. It's worth noting, by the way, if you have a undead thief, they don't need lockpicks because they can use their finger as a lockpick, which is really kind of funny. Ooh, a spear, a dagger, a plate, and some gold. I definitely need the gold. Um, I don't think I have identify. Oh, apparently I do. The ear piercer. Fair enough. Um, sure. I'm okay with this. Alright. So if we can avoid at all being in the middle of this, I would like to. Hmm. That of course was so many years ago now. I can hardly remember the smell of his skin anymore. Oh, but I've told you about that many times before, haven't I? Silly me. You aren't tired of my stories, are you? Can you even hear me in there? So he's a weirdo. Um... Um, there is some dialogue there, but he essentially just, like, licks your face and is a general creep. So I'm just going to kill these guys instead. I'm 
So Laura just saved the little girl down there, which is interesting. I've never seen that happen before. Um... These meat golems are arguably a bigger problem than these guys are. That'll do. Two can play that game. That'll freeze her. Also clear up some of his blood, which I know, I guess that's alright. So these meat golems take a couple of turns to actually break out of their cage. They have to smash the door down. That's a shame. That was odd. Um, being on the left-hand side actually helps quite a lot, because it gives me a lot of turns to do some stuff that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. There we go. Hmm. I didn't hit the guy even though I thought I would. I guess these guys don't have physical armor, so Blood Rain is a definite possibility. Dazzling Bolt here. Nice. We're going pretty well thus far. Um, I will give haste to the Red Prince. Enrage, by the way, um, that will up your... It'll make all of your physical attacks do critical hits. Um, the downside is... I oh, you can hit me with Miss Greatest one from there. Interesting. Uh, the downside is you can't use any magical abilities. So you won't be able to use any of your spells, you can only use physical skills and or auto attacking, but you will always crit with them. So, arguably worth it. Um, well, would you look at that? Let's get in there, shall we? Shocked. He has a shit ton of magic armor. Shocked. Let's make it rain. So that, I'll give the Red Prince on Canny Evasion, and Peace of Mind. Um, clear Minded, by the way, gives you plus two. Actually, it's a scaling skill, so it gives you Strength, Finesse, Intelligence, Wits, and Accuracy, but those actual values will go up the further along in the game you get, and the higher level you get, which makes it a very, it's like the best buff in the game, essentially. Um, I'll grow some horns, because why not? And then I will get some of my magic armor back, because I think I'm going to need it. There we go. Yeah. I'm not sure he hit me once, though. I think he missed with every single one of his flurry.
Interesting choice. He's stunned. He's just wet. You have full magic armor. You have no magic armor. You have no magic armor. Okay. I just get to shoot this guy. <coughs> How much magic armor do I have? Eight. Not really enough. Red Prince should have enough though. Where is he running to? I have no idea where they're going, by the way. Like, I don't know. They're doing some weird shit. Love grenade, that ain't good. That ain't good at all. I don't know why they're attacking each other. Maybe these meat golems should attack anyone, I don't know. Um, okay. So I've been charmed. Which sucks. Granted, she has no armor, and she's chilled. So I can kind of just do this. Mm. I have no way of breaking her out of this, unfortunately. Uh, Clear-minded will get rid of it. That's the play. Because it'll freeze loose for one turn. Teleport him right here. That was insanely good. Um, and just shoot him, I guess? Yeah, sure. Meat Golem's still enraged. I think that means he'll attack anybody. Yeah, it does. Sweet. If I kill him, the charm effect may wear off. I don't know if that works or not. It did. Totally did. Kill the guy who cast the charm, and the charm wipes off. Which makes a lot of sense. I didn't know these guys actually attacked each other. I've never been in that situation where it's been an issue, so... Shocked. And Ice Fan. Pretty simple. So that worked out fairly well. So there's a little girl there who is hiding just down here. I pointed her at the start of the fight. And and saw Lo and usually you have to open the pipe for her so she can get out. And so Laura actually did it by the look of it. He ran out this gate and opened this for her, which was kind of funny. Um, it's the little girl who was on the boat at the very start of the game. Um and told us to go back and save the other people. She gets caught down here, and she's hiding, and you can actually let her escape, and she can get out to the to the ocean. Which is cool. Now this is some stuff. We get a face ripper here. Procure a ripped off face that can be used for shape-shifting. Because <laughs> of course you do. Um, also get a key. Granted, a lot of this stuff, not that useful. The daggers are quite good if you're at the start of the game and you're doing a rogue build, but I'm not doing a rogue build. Eh, I'll keep the face ripper, why not? 
Alright, so that's 15 minutes that took me. I should be able to do the fight at the... Uh, um, that everybody? I think that's everybody. There's some other stuff around here, but it's gross and body parts, so I'm not going to bother looting any of it. Um, <laughs> what I am going to do is actually go down... Speaking of which, where is Solara? Oh, he's right here. Hey, buddy. We come out smelly, because of course we do. But this is just down the road from where we came off on the boat. This is the boat down here. If we come down here, the little girl might be here somewhere. Eh, I think she's just gone. Interesting. Anyway, let's go back to town. And I'm going to take on the guys down at the docks. And then we'll have pretty completely cleared out Fort Joy of all Magisters, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I've essentially just done a hard coup and completely kicked out the Magisters of their own fort, so I'm happy about that at the very least. So we want to go down here. Now, we're over-leveled for this fight. We're level 6, and this fight is ordinarily, I think, designed for level 5. Having said that, you never know. You can see here, there's got three Magisters here. There's another one down here, I think. And then we've got her, and then a bunch of silent monks. So this fight can be pretty hard. I think the way we're going to start it, though, I'm going to sneak up here. I think we're actually going to start it with a blood rain, because that will set all of these guys bleeding. It allows me to do this. Hmm, can't get all three, unfortunately. I can get these two, though. Left them both with one. They're all chilled. I can set rain over here. Which should freeze all of them. This is, by the way, is why I love this build. Um, it's not one I've really used that often, but having this much control is kind of insane. Your damage isn't as high as you can with other builds, but some fairly significant control you can have with this kind of build. Particularly on my wolf. This guy, probably less of a problem in all honesty. Because I can teleport him away. Um, let's see. These guys have no magic armor. Neither do you. That made him stunned, apparently.
allows me to get an effect on this guy, which will do some fairly significant damage. That's a hell of a fossil strike. A hell of a fo fossil strike. Haste on the Red Prince. Peace of mind. Courage. Uncanny evasion. See if we can take him out. Did we did. Apparently picked a really good place to sand because these archers can't hit me, which is kind of insane. Hmm, encourage kind of sucks, but all in all, I'm not too worried about it. I don't think I have teleport up with him, do I? No, I don't. Granted, don't necessarily need it up. I've now split my party, which may not be the best of ideas, but I feel like I can tank fairly, fairly well from here. Also, I can... Go to the same positions. Hmm... I think I save Dazing Bolt for now. In all honesty. I want for him to kind of come to me a bit, and then I can get him with some AoE fairly easily. I got rid of his physical armor. That's something. As I said, action economy in this fight is what's really going to hit you, with the amount of guys there are, so if you can control them as much as possible, it makes things easier. Alright. Next turn is when I come back big time. Um, but for now... I think we shields up. And then we just shoot this guy to get rid of his magic armor. And preemptively I'll put a heal on myself as well. Here we can get a good dazing bolt off. Both shocked. Chilled. All shields up here as well. That just made me even bulkier. Oh, they have knives. I think they have knives. I don't care about being crippled. They did backstab on me, which makes me think they have knives, but they may not. They may just be able to backstab innately, which would be weird, but whatever. 
He's chilled. I don't think he'll be able to get to me and attack. Indeed. That's three of them frozen. That apparently doesn't hit, so... I guess I'll just do this to do more damage to these guys. I'm gonna want to take them out eventually anyway. Let's just light this up. Alrighty then. Oh yeah, I don't have teleporter on, it, on her anymore, that's kind of annoying. Um, I guess just buff the Red Prince to all hell. Then... That could freeze him? Probably not, but... No, not quite. And then we'll just go invisible so we don't get backstabbed again. Knockdown sucks. Silent Monk is pretty much dead. Can't even run through the fire because that will kill him, I believe. on him as well. Kill that ranger. And then turn, I think. I'm fine if they keep attacking loose, I'll be honest. I don't know why they are, but I'm okay with it. I guess they're going for her because I have evading on. I guess that makes sense. Where the hell is he going? Oh my god, he was going after Sir Laura. <laughs> what an idiot. Um, kind of sorry, Lisa. Mosquito swarm. That's interesting. Alright, I feel happy. I think we're pretty easily won this at this point. Alright, Red Prince. 34. That straight up kills you, so do that. Apparently not. While you're here, kill him. It's one way to do it. Um...
<laughs> that was a ridiculous play and I love it. Um, Alright, so you could get stunned. Now you can't. Oh, I'm hasted. I can move fairly far with one AP. That was close. Losa might go down. This Inquisitor is fairly dangerous. I'm not particularly worried about dying, but... <sighs> that should freeze. get out of that hellhole. I'm doing that for the heal more than anything else. Here, give him haste. <laughs> Killing herself, of course she is. Uh. Not particularly worried about the fossil strike. Alright. Chilled. Frozen. That should kill her. Sweet. Um, I guess just do as much damage as you can to her. That'll do. Whew. So that was a fight. Wait for all these surfaces to stop being frozen and electrified and all sorts of things. Um, Silent Monk. Another Silent Monk over here. And I'm going to loot everything here. There's a chest just behind here that is locked. Pick that lock please, Lisa. While you're doing that, I'll get all these other people. There's some gold on the floor. That's kind of weird. Oh, it was probably in a barrel. I see. That probably makes more sense, I guess. I think I just got the key to that chest anyway, so somewhat irrelevant that I pickpocketed it. But pickpocketed? Lockpicked. Somewhat irrelevant that I lockpicked it, considering that I just picked up the key, but, you know, whatever. All right. Junk. Nothing but junk. Um, there is some stuff over here, notably the nails. Um, I don't really care about anything else except the nails. Ordinarily when I'm playing, I would just pick up literally everything. But, playthrough, it's less, less useful to grab everything through a playthrough. But lockpicks are very useful. As a nails. Alright, so we got Magister's Mantle. Reflect as water damage. That's interesting. I don't think it's good as what we've got, though. It has more armor here, obviously. But plus one Necromancer is just that good that it's not worth upgrading. Increased sneaking. Potentially. I'm sorry if that screwed up the recording. Um, bloody Windows giving me updates about shit that I don't care about. Even though it says, oh, we've closed it in the background so that we don't accidentally show you things. Ugh. 
A Forbidden History. This book contains a description of several magical artifacts that have been forbidden by the Divine Order. As you flip through the book, your eye lands on a section about idols of rebirth. Infused with magic, ancient magic, these small statues allow the Wheeler to return to Rivalon after death. The statue grows ashen and loses all magical properties after use. Impish tinkerers were widely known to travel with such idols on their person. Some sources even suggest these tinkerers could restore the magic properties of their inert idol using the power of a resurrection scroll. Meddling with the sanctity of death is a grave offence and all idols have been destroyed and outlawed. Those with the knowledge to craft them have been duly re-educated. Uh, that's a bit wondering. Um, that gives you the crafting recipe for the glowing idol of rebirth. Um, I'm not going to go through... Is it in grimoires? Runes? Uh, I don't remember where it actually saves it. But, if you take a resurrect... Later on, we get an item that allows us to resurrect after we die. Um, ordinarily, like, there's a lot of people who don't realize that you can use that. And, like, it gives you, like, an inert version afterwards. But you can actually just take that inert version and combine it with a resurrection scroll, and it will just fix it. I'll show that more properly when we actually get there, though. It's pointless me kind of describing it earlier, and then later on you won't know what I'm talking about. So, when we actually get the idol later, I'll show you what what it means more specifically. But I think that's going to be it for this episode. So we now killed every Magister in the entirety of Fort Joy. So now we can head out and actually explore the bog more properly. Which we're going to do next episode. I'm just kind of slowly walking my way back through here. Go here. I'll do my outro. Um, so, I will say thank you for watching. If you like the video at any point, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. We will finally leave Fort Joy proper and head out into the bog in this area over here. As you can see, there's still a fair amount to do in the first act. The first act is pretty long. Pretty damn long. Anyway, thanks guys. I'll see you next time.